John here. Electricians need to know. Apprentices need to know. And this is more for apprentices. Um, it's about three conductor wire. Uh, the red wire, the white wire, and the black wire, and the ground wire in one case. Okay, most electricians are pretty familiar with this. Uh, it's a circuit from red to white and the circuit from white to black. Two circuits sharing the same neutral. And of course they're sharing the ground also. So what did this electrician call me for the other day? He called me and said, John, I had to crowd in a 220 volt breaker in this panel and I had to move some stuff around and I couldn't keep the, the red wire on phase two and the black wire on phase one. I had to put a red wire and a black wire on phase two in order to get that other breaker in. Well, I didn't really uh, quite understand that, but what I did was I called him and said, you know, if, if they're sharing a neutral and you put the red circuit on the same phase as the black circuit, uh, then you're going to get in trouble because it's going to overload the current on the neutral. So uh, I'm, I'm of the old school that, or the new school, that everything on phase one is either black or black. Everything is, phase two is red. Everything. Even though you have black wires on phase two, they need to be painted black. I mean, painted red. Okay, because phase two, uh, the second bus, is uh, a red bus. And phase one is a black bus. And we need to keep that uh, pretty much regimented. That way we don't overload the neutral. Now, how many times have I gone out uh, to residents and found the neutral burned up or the neutral, the, the insulation is dripping off the neutral because it's been overheated so much. It uh, shares the neutral, but it's on the same phase. There's no potential difference between the black and the red. You put a meter on it, it reads zero. From here to from here to neutral, you're 110. From here, you're 110. But from red to black, you're reading nothing. You need to have 220 volts between the red wire and the black wire if you are going to share a neutral, and that can't change. That has to be. So when you move breakers around in a panel, you're going to have to maintain that no matter what. Uh, the the customer's relying on you to maintain a 220 volt difference between the red circuit uh, and the black circuit, okay? And of course, 110 uh, to the white wire. Um, all right, now, I mean, it doesn't happen uh, that often, but um, let's say over the last 10 years, we found this um, maybe 10 times. So about once a year, maybe, maybe a little more than that. Uh, so, but it's out there. So just be aware of it, be conscious of it. And this is something you uh, need to ensure. Now, a quick little story. I was in the boiler industry. Um, I did a lot of wiring for boiler systems, uh, Claver Brook and Brooks and Claver Brooks in Chicago. So anyway, uh, we'd go out and do installations and we went to this big hospital and you could eat off the floor in this boiler room. It was really nice. We were doing a wiring job and, and the doctor came in that was in charge of the whole thing. And we were talking about how clean and spick and span and everything color coded. And I was about done with my job and getting ready to leave um, back to uh, my hometown. And I, I said, you know, as, as nice as everything is in this boiler room and everything is color coded, the first phase, the second phase and the third phase in your panels are not marked. Uh, and you share neutrals in almost every one of them. I don't understand why the, you wouldn't uh, want to mark those phases 
uh, in your panel to identify uh, what phase is on where so you don't overload your panel and it, and it get, continues to be uh, wired correctly. Uh, a phase is black, B phase is red, and C phase is blue. So he looked at me and he said, show me. So I opened a panel and I showed him and he said, well, I want it done right. So uh, before long, I was presented a contract to go in and remark all of his wires and all his panel and even out in the field. So I made quite a bit of money on that one. So if you do it right the first time, you, you won't have to go back and do it over. Okay, thanks. Now I have about 20 videos on YouTube and most of them are for electrical issues. Some of them are for tying off ladders and protecting your toolbox and things of that nature. But I've been an electrician over 50 years and we've learned to do things um, a specific way. And I wanted to pass that on before uh, I kicked the bucket. So uh, subscribe to my channel and once in a while, I'll put a new video on uh, like this one and uh, you'll be notified. All right. I want to thank you all for watching and I appreciate it.